Hello everyone, Giltar here with part two of my review of the movie Avatar, which again is in response to Exaggerated Elegy's review of the movie. Uh, picking up where I left off, I'll just finish up with the criticisms uh, with respect to the characters. Um, I mentioned the Colonel character, who I said was a comical villain. The reason being is that the movie starts off establishing the character as the sort of the next military character who is head of the security forces for uh, the mining operation. And in the beginning, he's shown as a sort of really rough, uh, typical, stereotypical military character who is really apathetic to the Navi, but in no way really shows any like, maliciousness towards them. He's just doing his job, he's doing what he's getting paid for, and he's looking out for the interests for his own people. But then in the second half of the movie, we see the character change to a more murderous, um, <laughs> I guess evil character who, he's just there to really just kill Navi and accomplish whatever mission that um, is set out for him from the uh, mining operation, you know, um, people in charge. And where it really culminates for me for why I think this is a villainous um, character but in a comical way is that at the end when he faces off with Jake and everything's in ruins, all the security forces are either fleeing or have been, you know, killed. Jake basically says, you know, it's all over, there's nothing for you to do here, you can't win. And the colonel basically says it's over when I say it's over or something to that effect and to me that's just so 1980s 1990s cheap action film cliche I mean uh, it's just it's really silly and the problem with that is that uh, Stephen Lang does a really good performance as the Colonel um, just like most other actors in this movie they, they put on a fine performance but usually it's being you know dragged down by the uh, poor writing for the characters I mentioned Selfridge is a confused rather than a conflicted character. And the reason why I think that is that if he was truly conflicted, we'd see some um, some insight into the character dealing with that problem of being in, in charge of this operation and perhaps doing things that he doesn't you know agree with. But we don't see anything of the sort. We just see him swing from either being apathetic or being remorseful. And perhaps it's because of the theatrical cut. Maybe in the director's cut or an extended edition, we'll see more uh, material that really explains why Selfridge goes back and forth between those two um, attitudes. And that essentially finishes up my criticisms of the movie, the negative points. I'll move on to the positive points. And I'll start off by saying that despite some of the bad acting and some of the bad characterization, I really do like Zoe Saldana's performance as uh, Neytiri. I think she did a great job. Uh, carried a lot of the performance um, through her voice and I'm not sure if they used motion capture but I, I found another good point about the movie was that the animation w was pretty standard in my opinion um, nothing particularly great but I felt that the uh, the movement of the characters like uh, the Navi people and the expressions on their faces was quite well done um, but again, it might be really due in large part to motion capture, so I mean, at that point, it's not really a CG um, praise, it's just the actors who had their facial expressions captured. Um, but regardless, I think Zoe did a great job, and uh, again, she, uh, sort of like the opposite to, to Sam Worthington, I think she brought a range to her performance that Sam kind of lacked. Another uh, good point about this movie was that I found that there were some really great ideas, interesting ideas in the movie. For example, the Avatar technology was a great, um, a great little uh, concept. Uh, despite I, I do have, you know, again have to mention that I do criticize it because in this movie it really, it really subverted the what possibly could have been a greater opportunity for discussing uh, cultural barriers and differences. Um, but, you know, again, it, with the use of the Avatar concept in the movie, it skipped any real opportunity for Jake to uh, really challenge himself in terms of trying to become a Navi, or rather understand them. Um, but, you know, that was a great idea. I do like the powered armor suits in this movie, uh, even though we can see, you know, it's not exactly original, but I just like the, the execution of it, the way that the, um, uh, the controls are, are these, like, uh, little... Uh, hand assemblies that you know you, you, the characters put their fingers and thumbs through, and the way it mimicked the movement was pretty neat. Although I do see parallels in that kind of uh, design concept to uh, Masamune Shiro's uh, Landmate Mecha in uh, Appleseed, 
very similar concept of an apple seed with a landmate technology. Whatever you do, the the, the landmate mecha, the powered armor um, does, like it mimics your movements. Um, and then you know, obviously there are some other parallels to other, I guess, visual designs. Uh, but I think the, the the powered armored suits in the movie were quite quite interesting. I do like the idea of the biotechnology network that the world has. I mean, it's not again I, an, an original idea or rather unique uh, as well, but it is a neat idea to bring into play to try to really hammer home the idea of the Navi's connection to their world is more of a literal sense. Though I've read this before in some articles discussing the movie, that some people do criticize the way that. Um, the, spiritu uh, the spirituality of the Navi people is partly explained through um, through bioscience, and some people criticize that. I don't think that's so bad because we still see that, despite that, the fact that there is a sort of scientific mechanical um, method for these people, or explanation rather, for these people to bond with fellow creatures and the the, the their Earth, their world. Uh, behind that, there's still the fact that we are getting to existentialism to a really brief point. Uh, we get the idea that despite the fact that people are able to share their, their, their consciousness through this system, this network, that there is um, a collective consciousness that we see as well in one part where Jake is bonded with the network and can hear all these different voices, these memories, and then we can sort of consider you know, what is memory? Is it something that is static or is it something that can truly live on in something else? We get into a lot of other sort of questions, so, um, you know, there are some interesting concepts and notions, it's just, it's a shame that we don't really get into them to a great degree, or a significant degree, a significant degree at all. And even though earlier I did really do a lot of criticizing of this movie on negative aspects, I do think that this movie is actually a, a, an enjoyable movie, it's a fun movie. And it's by no means a bad or terrible movie. It's a good movie. It's a decent movie. And you're not going to be wasting your money by, by going to this film and wasting your time. It's just that, again, I do have to... I am coming at this from an angle of seeing that science fiction is a great opportunity, a great genre for, for really challenging the viewer. And in this case, um, you know, it's a good movie, but it doesn't do anything that takes risk. It doesn't uh, endanger itself for losing the audience. So, in a way, I would say it is pedestrian, which is a bit of a shame, because I did expect more from a James Cameron uh, science fiction movie. So, overall, those are my thoughts. I would say I do recommend watching this movie if you keep an open mind. I wouldn't say shut off your brain, but I would say don't expect anything phenomenal or great from this story. Um, so, it is a mixed bag. I would say I would give this movie a pass, but, um, I, you know... I, that's my perspective. I'm sure if I didn't look at this as a science fiction film, as an opportunity to do more, I would give it a, a sort of more positive light, but again, I see any science fiction effort as a, as a good opportunity to, to do something a little different and challenge the viewer, uh, even if it's a little bit, which unfortunately Avatar really does nothing to, uh, uh, to really make the viewer think more than it has to, than they have to. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this alternative view of the movie. Uh, I have to say that I'm a, you know, I'm a sub I've been a subscriber of Exaggerated LG for a long time now, for, for months. And he was one of the people that actually got me back into Transformers fandom. Because I, one of the first reviews I saw of his was his uh, classic Starscream and uh, Universe Drag Strip action figure reviews. So I've got to thank him for that, for sure. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I hope you um, liked seeing an alternative view of this movie because I know I'm probably one of the minority in that I'm, I'm not a big fan of this movie because this movie has gotten a lot of critical acclaim uh, from just the average movie reviewer or critic. Um, so I'll see you guys soon with another review and have a great day.